What's up, everyone? I'm Danny. Marcy. And Robert. And welcome to Let's, Let's Talk, Talk Theater, Theater the, the podcast. podcast. Marcy. Do I have to say that every single time? Yes. I mean, like, okay. you know. Well, let's try it again. Or we'll do it, and then you say the podcast. Okay, well, let's just move on. We, we did it. The we podcast. It. Is that good? Just splice it in. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Happy uh, Friday, Junior. It's almost Friday weekend, y'all. Like, oh, you know, it's Thursday. Friday, right. Junior. I feel like those know? days don't really have a meaning anymore mm -hmm. in this. Yeah, the weekend, right? right? Like, what day is it? Yeah, like, so, I don't um, think it matters. I'm looking forward to the weekend. I. Why? What are you going to go do? Go I, out? No. Go oh out my God. party? Because, you know, we can no. totally do that. Right I'm now. taking drum lessons. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm taking drum lessons. My brother gifted it to me for Christmas. Um, and I'm going to take drum lessons. I'm really excited. Well, what made fun. you? I mean, obviously, it was a gift, right? But would you have done it otherwise? Um, I don't think so. Like, it's never been something that I'm like, I want to take drum lessons, but it's always been like, I would love to play the drums, you know? Like, if I was in the band, I'd want to be the drummer. Oh, yeah. Because I just think, like, the drummers are badass. I mean, <laughs> like, well, thanks, they're the... Uh, I was the drummer. You in were? But in the band, yeah. in the school band, that doesn't count. It's kind of nerdy. Were you in the drum line? Yeah. I always thought the yeah. drum line guys were, yeah. like, the coolest. Oh, I should say totally. girls, too, because there was a couple girls hey, in our drum line at my There Mackay. was some girls that were killer in my drum line. What high school did you go to? PSJ Bears. Uh... I think uh, I knew that. No, I knew that. Yeah. I just never know which PSJ because there's so many. So there's like yeah, seven. Just kidding. Four. There's like. Well, now there's like five. Oh, what? Right? Four. There's that Jefferson one. That's. Oh, I mean, yeah, I know five. it's just starting, but five. it's still five. another one. What? Yep. Yeah. They just opened a new one. So it's five. Where did you go to high school? I went to La Jolla High School before it split up into three schools. Oh. Yeah. Did you do any like extra? Oh, stuff? I was in orchestra. <gasps> I played the cello. That's something I wish I could have kept going in because I really loved it. And I was oh, like, not I to brag, but I was cello. pretty good. Really? But um, get into uh, it. Get back into it. Maybe uh, I don't know. Maybe. Do you still have one? No, I had one, but I left it here at school back in the day when I first started working here as a staff member. Just cause. And it disappeared. <laughs> oh. Disappeared. I don't know. Okay. I was so, in the choir. ghost. The ghost took it. The ghost now took plays it. And now I am sans. <laughs> sans a very expensive cello. I was in the show choir, y'all, and show choir. And I, I was like that. Glee. Is it like like it was, was it very much very like Glee? Much Same like situation. Glee. I see that. And um, yeah, I wasn't in theater. Okay, like girls. I didn't do theater in high school, but I was in show choir, which eh, it's pretty theatrical, right? Yeah. Um, and I was the captain my senior year. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I thought I was so cool <laughs> that I wasn't. Um, Not anymore. Now, but it was, it was fun. I mean, yeah, it was very much like Glee. And and people were going behind each other's backs trying to steal each other's solos and stuff. You know what, yeah. Yeah? Oh. Yeah, there was a lot of drama. That sounds fun. Mm -hmm. oh. I don't know if you guys remember the dinner shows at Mack High. I've heard, I had heard of them, but I never. No? Mm -mm. So the dinner shows, uh, which shout out to Mackay, <laughs> but they don't do them anymore, but they are obviously more involved in theater. Um, they were composed by, his name was Daniel Stinken. Stinken, I can, I'm sorry if I say that wrong. <laughs> um, he would mash up all of these songs from like composers and make a dinner show. And so he would give out solos to certain uh, girls, certain boys, right? And then like there, we would hire, not we, but my choir director would hire a choreographer and then there would be like, okay, this year it's gonna be the color red. So all the girls need to find a red dress and we wow. performed in a church and um, we would, the reason why it's called dinner show is because we would serve food and then the show would happen as they were eating. It's so like dinner theater, but just yeah. not theater. Yeah, but yeah. it was it was really it was cool. Just it, was a th it was just singing and Fun. it wasn't like, a musical, obviously, yeah. because it wasn't like a script or anything. It was just, we were just singing. Wow. Yeah. Remember when we took tap, adult yeah. tap at Melva's that yeah. one time with Julie Doyle? Shout out to Julie Doyle. And Melva's. I mean, I Melba's worked there. Ball. I worked, I, I got. So now talking about that, how, have you guys ever worked for like a non-theater show, maybe like a dance, like musicians, yeah. like yeah. opera? Yeah, that, yeah. The, totally. the dance company. Totally. How was that? Like, the, what, how did you guys feel about like working for somebody else um, besides like besides a, your basic your basic original traditional theater, traditional theater show right 
I liked it. I, yeah. I thought it was really different and it, it, it allowed me to see how similar it was, but it, it's in its own style. It's you a different I structure. Mean? Because like yeah. its own structure, its own everything, right. Uh, because like they still use a lights, lot of the they same, still use yeah. sound, mm -hmm. they still use sets, they still use things like that, but it's just quicker. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was. I mean, I got to work the recitals when I was uh, mainly assisting there. I, I did I get to see how, when it was recital time, how they would, you know, put together all the dances and like, you know, they'd have two acts because there were that many classes and that many girls and that many like, you know, from like jazz to, to ballet, to flocorico, to tap, to, you know, yeah. so there's all those different types of dance, right? And then all the levels of dance. Like you said, it was a structure, like they, all their songs needed to be a certain length because you can't go over that length because then yeah. the show's too long. Yeah. I don't know, it's just, it seemed more it like- It was very fast paced. It was I way that, more fast paced. The dance, paced. The dance. Yes. I, I really actually enjoy working with dancers. They're very, uh, very disciplined, I yeah. noticed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they, they're on top of their, they their, are. their stuff. They're used you know? to also a schedule. Yeah, like they're we very, are. Mm -hmm. I like, I really enjoy like dancers. If anybody has to work with any other type of performer, dancers, guys, they're really, yeah. really disciplined. Yeah. Um, so going off of that, so we can introduce our next guest. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are. Mr. Joseph Bettis. Uh, welcome, sir. Round of applause for Joseph. Joseph. <laughs> hey, guys. Hi. With this magnificent Joseph. beard. <laughs> thanks, thanks. I just, I, I groomed just for you guys. Oh, fantastic. It looks yeah. great. I, I feel honored. Oh, thank yeah. you. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah. We missed so, you. We yeah. haven't, haven't talked seen you in a long time. time. I know, it's, it's been, been forever. It's, it's been totally. almost a year, probably. I don't know. I it's think the last time we saw you was last year. When Before we got quarantine. to sit down with uh, Dr. Monta. Oh, oh yes. And, yeah. and that was oh probably God, the last that's... time I saw you. Yeah, that was the last time. Wasn't that, like, like that happened... That was before the right before the pandemic right got before. crazy. Yeah. yeah, right before. Right, right before, before they started telling people to stay home. Yeah, I yes. I really like treasure that little moment there because I never like my teacher or my mentor or anything, but I I knew a lot about her, but that was really cool to yeah. like do that. Yeah, she was great. She's such a funny lady. <laughs> she's a force. She was she's so funny. Like some of the things she was saying yes. that were not put in our little tribute because yeah, no, it's <laughs> she true. she's in, she's. Intense. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, totally. So Joseph, um, what is it that you do in, in at UTRGV? Um, well, I am the production and arts facilities manager for the performing arts complex at UTRGV. It's a relatively new venue. It's only five Beautiful. years old. Yeah. It's a, a thousand seater um, acoustic hall. Mm -hmm. So um, there used to be a, a performing arts complex, or there used to be a, a hall there before, and um, throughout the years, the the way things are in the valley, you know, it would flood all the time, and um, it just got into a lot of neglect, and um, eventually they they found some money, and they were able to just revamp the that whole section of the campus, and I want to say it was something like $44 million was invested. Wow. Which is crazy because, you know, like in the arts, you know, for people to, to invest into that, you wow. know, it's, a, it's, it's really lucky. So, uh, and we got an amazing acoustic call. I think uh, over $2 million of the budget alone was just set aside on how things sounded inside the space. Wow. So, um, yeah, no, like, I mean, you guys, you guys been there. And yeah, it's an incredible space. So, so, oh, so um, for those people that don't know, what kind of, of, of um, events do you host there at, yeah. at the PAC? So, I'm, uh, I'm like a, a booking house almost, or like a, a venue that hosts a lot of different events. Okay. The majority of the events that I have are music events. You know, I work with the School of Music. Okay. And so I want to say that 80% of the events that we have there are music. Then I also work with the, the dance department. Okay. So I do five uh, dance productions a year. Oh, cool. And then um, ceremonies that the university might have, you know. So they'll do uh, award ceremonies, or um, when we open up to the community, sometimes we'll get mm. uh, some dance companies, nice. or sometimes we'll get graduations, high school graduations, things, things like that. 
So um, we got a little bit of everything, really. That's uh, nice. so, uh, so that's what I do over there. I that's think cool. I remember seeing like a, a film there once. Charlie yeah, Bella. We, uh, we had actually, we've, we've hosted the South Texas Film Festival yes. oh, yeah. Ooh, uh, yeah. a couple of years in a row. And That's I think cool. we're supposed to host it again right before the pandemic came. So, um, but yeah, no, they, they come and they show, they, they nice. present um, cool. the, their films there in our venue sometimes. So, so um, good thing you bring up that one word that we constantly talk about, right? The pandemic. Okay. So like, what shifts have you guys done or how has it affected the venue, yourselves, the, the whatever it is you're, you're building itself? What, what's... What's it like now? So, um, to go from having a season where I probably have maybe <laughs> like almost 200 events a year wow. to practically none, mm -hmm. that's crazy for me, mm -hmm. you know, because I found myself just kind of, just kind of like floating around, <laughs> like where you're just like, well, what, what do I do? Yeah. You know, there's only so many things I can do throughout the week that don't involve an actual performance. So at first, we, we just didn't know what was happening and everything was up in the air. And then towards the summer, we started thinking, you know what, let's see if we can pull up something from archives, see if we, ha we can find some things because um, we really need to share things. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, definitely. people are stuck at the house, yep. they're bored and you know, people, it's funny because people sometimes think so, people don't think about the arts that much, but when you're stuck at home forever, then you start realizing, man, I really miss listening to music, mm -hmm. or I, I really miss, you know, seeing someone on stage. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's... Uh, sitting in an audience. Yeah, even sitting in an audience, you know, you yeah. can be sitting at home, but sitting at home is only, you know, you like after a while, home. you're just yeah. like, oh my God, I'm tired of sitting in my yeah. couch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wish so, I had that uncomfortable chair in the audience. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wish I could sit yeah. That yeah. overbearingly like, cold, right now, a lot of like cold. building, yeah. it's just... Um, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, so we started doing that, you you know, we started uh, tr digging through archives and asking faculty if they had things that they had previously recorded because we hadn't really set up to archive, yeah. mm -hmm. um, especially yeah. uh, visually. Everyone, I think everyone right? started reach like, to try to reach back and see, like, have yes. we recorded anything? Because we did that. Yes. Yeah. And, and now you're now we we're realize. starting to realize, like, hey, maybe we should yes. start important. documenting mm -hmm. more. Yeah. Yes. Not documenting enough. Yes. Uh, so yes. I think it's a good thing that. Uh, we started started thinking about that. Yeah, so now yeah. we should. Well, that the pandemic brought in a. No, I mean not that it's good. good. It's not. It's a little good thing. It's. Like crap, I think it's. Yeah. It's actually. I think you know? it's really good in a way because in the arts we're so used to living in that moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, a show uh, will live a couple of weeks on stage, and yeah. you yeah. know, and then on. it poofs, you yeah. know, <laughs> goes away. With music, um, a performance will live maybe in, in a particular stage, it's just a one night, and then it travels and it keeps going, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it really made everybody in our field just think about how to become creative in a new way and, mm -hmm. you know, pushing us to be more technologically savvy yes. and learn mm -hmm. things yes. like editing and yeah. what kind of camera should uh -huh. I get and all that, you know? <laughs> That's what we started to, I didn't even notice that I was like, oh no, I have to like dig back into my bachelor's degree where we learned all this film stuff. Yeah. Same, just thing, like, same thing, same thing Oh my here. God. I, like <laughs> when I got my new phone, like I was like, uh, uh, I'm, a, I'm a Samsung guy, I'm an Android guy. Oh no, uh, shut it down. We'll cancel the whole We're interview. We're done. We're done. No, um, but you know, I, I saw the new Samsung Ultra and I was like, oh, the camera uh, specs look really, really great. Good, yeah. I'm going to, um, I'm going to buy that. it so I can use it for work. And before, when I bought my, would buy my phone, I wouldn't really think, you know, I'm going to use it for work. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, I just need something that works and it's going to get me by day to day. So it's, it's changed how I think about those things. Nice. Nice. Yeah, we, we, the same thing here with Les, like, it pushed me to get in front of a computer more, you know, like, and start editing things. I'm not an editor. Yeah, he didn't was. know how to never, edit at all. I've never, like, you know, because I didn't even go to school for editing. So, like, none of that. I'm strictly theater, you know. So, 
this happened and and they were both like yeah we can kind of edit and i was like all right i guess i'll edit like so we all just kind of got behind a computer and we were just they were both guiding me to learn this because i didn't know how to do it and then here it i am it was practically like, like also like we had to i had to relearn because i was yeah. like I, I mentioned one of the other ones because you know like things like film if you even take a year off from using all that stuff it you get left behind yes and everything yeah. changes all the pro <laughs> to, you know we learned on like we learned on final cut exactly. pro like seven Exactly. The programs, Six, you know, yes. no, and now 30. it's like everybody uses Premiere, and you're like, I don't know what. Yeah, no way. You know, props to yes. you for, for <laughs> jumping on Premiere because it's not easy. It's not. You know? it's Some just, people just do iMovie. Yeah. Like no, no disrespect. But Honestly, like, iMovie was it's too easy. There's some things that are too easy. But you're like, no, that doesn't work think for about, me. You know? it's exactly. Frustrating it's enough. Frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> but think about the people that are like, I just needed like, you know, I just need something, and then it's like, well, iMovie. You know, I can't. You know, I think if It'll help you put together what you need to put together. Yeah. iMovie works great. Yes. You know, I know a lot of a lot of people that. Yeah, I mean, true. just like all of us, we're digging into what is editing. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and what makes it good. Mm -hmm. You know. And, and what's available because Adobe is not cheap. It, it oh, isn't. Yeah. You know? It isn't. Although I think it's a really good idea that they started doing the whole subscription service thing mm -hmm. because, like, some people don't use it all the time. And I remember those or programs used to cost like a thousand dollars. Yes, yeah. ridiculous. And, and then they would update. Yeah, yeah, and then they would update. Yes. But now I, it's nice that you don't have to buy a physical copy. Right. You, you know, it's like right. an online thing, and then you like twenty bucks a month. And it comes with an, uh, its own cloud too, yeah. so you can kind of store your, your projects space. up so there. So I think that's brilliant on Adobe's part. And I also people complain about the whole subscription thing, but I think it's genius actually. Yeah. Yeah, like if I you mean, don't need to use it for a couple money. months, yeah, you it don't is. pay it for is. it. You know, yeah. how and many, you're gonna get and you remember in college, we'd be like, hey, do you have the new Final Cut Pro? So <laughs> yeah, I how many times have oh, you wait, like installed it? You yeah. Know? yeah. And, <laughs> And because you're gonna get only so many licenses, you can right? all, Yeah, you can only get so many, and you know you're, you're a like broke copying college it on people's student. Computers. You gotta get stuff done. Yeah. And it's due tomorrow. And yeah. it's due tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. Oh, do you remember like we used to pull all these all-nighters? Oh, we just would for... have editing parties where everybody yes. would be on their laptops, like editing, and all way into the so, night. That's so, so I guess cool. funny. Yeah. Like let's let's give our, our audience a little bit of a of a backstory here. Marcy and Joseph we know went to each college other. together. Yes, mm -hmm. they went UTPA. to college. Yes, yes UTP. So yeah. you guys have known each other for <sighs> 2007? I want to say yes, since wow. 2007. Yeah. That's like so a decade, y'all. More that's than a more decade. Than a more, yeah. That's 13 years? More than a decade. It's good. I'm not a mathematician, but I would say somewhere <laughs> yeah. along. Somewhere less, than less than 100, for sure. Less than 100, and more than five. Yeah. Uh, more than one, less than 100. Yeah. But yeah, the, we went to school there. Uh, we know quite a few people who work around the valley who also went to school there. Mm -hmm. And everybody's associated with it in some way or form. Like, everybody's done stuff there. You did stuff there. That's how I met you guys. Yeah, that's how he met us. Yeah, like, you doing were a show here, there. and Dr. Carroll went and did a show over there, and you were in that show, yeah. ah, right? Cool. Yeah. We did much ado about nothing. Oh, Joseph and yeah. I both went over there because I was a student here. You were Joseph a student here. I, I met you here. Yeah. I remember. You um, had my position. Oh, you worked here. I worked here. here. Yes, I was going I to ask. Here. I forgot. You both, did you both work here Not around together. the same time? No. 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 OK. But you worked here. I did. I got hired on as a work study, or they opened up a work study position for me, but I wasn't enrolled here. Oh. And uh, I Direct was, wage. That's what yes. they call them. It's like literally a work study, but some for somebody who's not a student yes. here, mm -hmm. directly. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the time, there was, I mean, it wasn't like how you guys have it set up now, where it's it's a it's a big strong program. It was, it was barely, barely starting. Yeah. Yeah. It was yes. a it, and uh, it's a baby. Yeah. Jack uh, wanted to do this musical called uh, <laughs> Working. Yes, working. <laughs> and uh, and it was, it's a great show. Uh, if you've ever seen it, or if, you have, if you're interested, just look it up. It's actually really, really good. It it's has a good some really good music, yeah. and um, the stories are it really hit, good. It's home to a lot of people, actually. Yes, yeah. it's very relatable. Hmm. Um, so we do I actually never saw it. I think it's if you're I don't know what it's about. if you're just like diving into musicals, I would say working as one of those musicals that you could definitely relate to. It's not like too over the top or right. anything. Yeah. So he was like, I need help on the show and I want to pay you and you know we can pay you so we'll bring you on as a work study and you can start working and I'm like, cool. How cool. So and that's how I met Robert mm -hmm. uh, way back then when he was a, a young a young child. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was. was like, like 18 or 19, I think. I think I was like 22, maybe. Oh, you see? You yeah. were 22. 23. No. I want to, I, for some yet. reason, I just, I just remember you being younger. 23, yeah. You know? Um, but yeah, no, and at then, most, um, and then we worked again. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
when at UTRGV at U, for when you went to do. UTRGV. Oh. Yeah. Oh, UT, UTPA, right, right? I'm sorry. Yes, UTPA. UTPA. Yes. yes, yes, yes. yes um, Dude, do you remember that one time that we stayed here doing lights, like? Overnight with uh, with este Robert Robert and Dulce. Yes. <laughs> Just like for putting... working. Yes, and that oh. was my fault because I was like, I want the lights to be like this. And, yeah. And Robert was like, uh, his, Robert Collado, Collado, who is uh, wonderful. He's he works a lot with film. Um, him and Dulce, uh, the, the, who are all... Oh, my God. They're all Yo, colleagues. Now I know who you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Roberto Coelho, yeah. Uh, yeah. He was and one Dulce. of y'all's friends. Aww. <laughs> Aww. I mean, I was more friends with Dulce. Uh, I love that Dulce, show, by the way. If listen, you're watching Dulce, for sure. <laughs> that <laughs> show... You were great. So it was just me, like, and I was, like, the production <laughs> manager. Yeah. And I didn't know two, they were a part of that. Two weeks, oh, shit. Two weeks before, I'm, like, pulling my hair or whatever, because it was yeah. the, the week before Hell Week, and I'm, like, how the hell am I going to do this? And I, I went on Facebook and I was like, guys, I'm working on a show and I need a team of people, you know? And, you know. Because that's like, that's how. We're all very lucky back then. There was so many people that were very interested in just yeah. doing stuff for the yeah. sake of doing it. Yes. Not like, no. Yeah. Now everybody's like, oh, I can't. I have a job. I need money. I need this. Yeah. But like, was it because there wasn't enough students or it was just a small program? Yeah, like, how could you know? Tiny. Now we can reach out to our, our students, students to help we us. We had four you know. students, okay. yeah. which that's was, was me, literally like four Myra, or five Gina, majors. Jeremiah. Yes. Okay. And I think at the rando. time, at the time of working, the total number of majors was less than ten. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it was. You know, and uh, so yeah, no, I mean it's brand new, brand right. spanking new. Yeah, well, because if you're saying you and needed it's a, a you, you called yes. out, and it's a musical. Yeah. For and a team, that yeah. we don't do that. You no. know, like that's it's more of like no. where are our actors? Where I mean, are I the men? Where are the we female? We had to do that still for a long time. Mm. We needed people to come help and thankfully there was always enough people that were like yeah I want to do it just because I love doing mm -hmm. it thank god and then also the added benefit of working in a different venue mm -hmm. yeah. because mm -hmm. you know yeah they sought out different experiences That's exactly what they exactly to learn yeah. everywhere. so thank god for for them and Jesse Castellanos also helped me oh on yeah the show. Jesse C and um who else worked on that show um several people came out and helped me you know mm -hmm. and I was so grateful to that because like Dulce helped me with costumes and yeah. organizing that because it was, uh, I can't remember how big the cast was. I want to say it was like 10 or it no more big. than 10. It looked big because no I, I found some archive of it that Rob sent me. Yes. yes. And, it was no more than 10. And, for and sure. I, I saw a music faculty member that she was in it. I, um, yeah. What, what's her name? Sorry, I'm Sorry. picturing this. Yeah. There we go. And then uh, este Warren yeah. was Warren in was it. Warren. Warren. Yeah. Warren, Gus. Sharon, Gus. There, was, um, there was a lot of people. Remember like, the like girl from Telemundo? It's the Jasmine. Jasmine. Rico. Oh my God! Such a she's so <sighs> beautiful and her voice. Um, not Telemundo. It was like Channel Four, no? Or I'm not sure. Like I'm not sure, but I know she's she works in media. Yeah, there was like ten of them, and it was an interesting cast. I really enjoyed it. That was my first time stage managing. Jack Carroll put me and Myra in charge of that, oh, and like, Myra. oh my god, so it was you, crazy. Would you say that I was just thrown in there? That Jack Carroll had a big influence in like what you're doing now. Absolutely, Absolutely. same. I, I me met, too. Listen, Absolutely. I met Jack Carroll when I lived in Georgia. Wow. Right? Wow. Uh, I went to this. Uh, two-year college called Darton College that doesn't exist anymore. It's now got absorbed into a, another university, so it's now called Albany State University. Um, and they had uh, a two-year theater program. And uh, I remember <laughs> I was talking to Jack and where I wanted to go, and and he and some of the frustrations that I had, you know, as because at the time I did a lot of acting, mm -hmm. and um, and I was telling him, you know the frustrations that I had growing up as a Latino actor in right. a predominantly black and white community. Right. And yeah. just That's in true. general, like when they cast the roles, they don't really like to mix um, yeah. races because it might offend people. You know, I, I lived in the middle of the Bible Belt. Wow. So even, you know, those kind of things really could trigger yeah. the viewer, yeah. you know? And, uh, and, he, and he was always like, yeah, it's, it's such, you know, Bullshit. And if you ever met Jack Carroll, like, 
you know, mm-hmm. c- cursed like a sailor. Yeah. You know, he's from New York. He didn't care. <laughs> yeah, you know? that's totally. So uh, he would just let you have it. And uh, <laughs> so he was like, yeah, it's crap. It's crap. You know? And he, he told me. So he, ahead of his time. Yeah. yeah he so was, ahead of his he was time. like, that's crap. That's bullshit. You know, even yeah. if it's you, you donate it yourself, town. he'll be like, you're bullshitting yourself. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't believe that crap. <laughs> yeah, he was. Do it again. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, so, so he told me, he was like, look, um, I have this friend, her name is Maria Monta, and she works at the University of Texas Pan American in South Texas, and it's the, at the time, I think it was the third or second highest, uh, Latino graduate university. Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, I don't know where Dang. we stand now, mm-hmm. or that the school stands I think down, we're but- still pretty high up. I yeah, I think we're, we're up there for yeah. sure. Yeah, Latino. And, uh, and he was like, everybody now. there is, you know, for lack of a better word, brown. Because <laughs> uh, at the time, at the time, it was because we had this, me and this other guy, we were the, the only two Latinos in there, and we would call each other the brown guys, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so so that's, why, that's why he said that. But it was like, yeah, you know, everybody there is brown. It's like, it's your people, you know, it's, your it's not, people. it's not, you know, <laughs> it's you your mean? community. What do you mean? You're like, I'm Puerto Rican. You're well, yeah, Mexican. you know, I'm Puerto Rican. And, all the same. No, and everybody kidding. here is, is mostly of, <laughs> Mexican. a Mexican. Mexican. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I think what he, he didn't mean it in, in that sense. He just meant it like, it's, <laughs> right. it's a community that you'll thrive in. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and he was like, if you want, um, I'm going to go there for spring break anyways. If you want, you can come with me and I can, uh, take me, you can meet Dr. Monta and you can meet, you Show can go you to school and check it out. And the rest is history. And yeah, <laughs> no, I met everybody and then I applied for a scholarship and they gave it to me. And so I was actually paying less than you were, um, <laughs> I was paying less <laughs> as an out-of-state student. I was paying less wow. than in-state students wow. nice. because wow. of the scholarship that I got. That's amazing. The See? same one Marcy fills out and it was one paper. No, that was another one. That uh, was the Marian Monta scholarship. <laughs> yeah, that was a Marian Monta scholarship. But no, like um, you know, and then you would fill that out or whatever. Yeah, so I was so, telling them like we have a scholarship for Jack Harrell, and like so many people can't even do the minimal work that it takes to fill it out. But yet, at when we had it, it was like literally one page, yeah. nothing else, and most people still want to. It. Yeah, no, it's super easy. It was so easy. Super easy. I mean, Miss Elva would have it already half done for you, anyways. Yeah. Like, here it is. All you gotta do is just, you know, this. Blah, 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 Put your name and your <laughs> information. Put your information. I already searched for the other stuff. Exactly. It, it's crazy how much money there is out there. Listen, if you <laughs> want to go to school and you can't afford it, you just need to look. Yeah. Because what, yes. there's so many opportunities for scholarships. It's crazy. They have this book, or at least back back in my day, <laughs> they had this book, it and it's literally book. called The Big Fat Book of Scholarships. Oh, yeah? And it's like... It's probably digital now. I'm sure it exists. Yeah, it's yeah. probably The Big Fat Digital Book of Scholarships. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, that thing, it's over a 1,000 pages, and or maybe even more than a 1,000, I don't know. But it has all of the scholarships that are offered throughout all the United States and all of the different categories that you can qualify for a scholarship. There's scholarship for being left-handed. There's scholarship for having one blue eye, what? one green eye. There's what? scholarship. So literally no excuse, y'all. Yeah, there is a scholarship for everything. And I want to say that most people don't even bother applying. So the scholarship builds up. I applied Ooh. for a couple and I ended up getting, at, for one of the scholarships, I got like $1,000. It was supposed to be $300. Um, or $200 or something really small, but because it had been so many years since somebody actually applied for the scholarship. It just started it built accumulating. Up, yeah, wow. it built up to 1,000 bucks, and they're like, well, we're gonna give you $1,000 because um, you're no the else. first person that's applied <laughs> in the right. last five years. Nice. And I was like, okay, awesome, you know? Yeah. And uh, so it's it out takes. there, you know? That's so all it takes. It is. So yeah. It's awesome. Um, yeah, it's, it's really interesting like how there's so much help but you just got to look for it. Mm-hmm. You, know? you really do. It's so when you were a major at UTPA, you were a design major? Yes. Okay, see, I, I majored in TV film. Okay. Because at the time, I, I really considered myself a, the Swiss, a Swiss army knife <laughs> of, of, you know, uh, theater. And I mean, we worked on a lot of shows yeah. together. So if it was hair and makeup, if it was costumes, it was building scenery, if we did it a lot was of, whatever. We did a lot of costume stuff together. Yeah. Joseph is actually really good at costumes. Something that like he should be doing more of because he was so good at it. Like he was great. And we worked a lot together on doing costumes and like Ooh. crazy stuff. And Fun. like, you know, in the costume shop with Stephanie Hawks. Yes, Stephanie. Stephanie Hawks, if you're watching, we love you. Um, still miss you. Um, <laughs> she was, that was another person who had a huge impact on my 
like oh, career, right? For sure. Oh for man. For sure. Wow. She really made me appreciate um, costumes. Period. Yeah. yeah. The mm -hmm. the detail that she went into. I, I remember one time she got onto me because she wanted me to prick stitch <laughs> a hem. Yes. And it was a hoop skirt, and I don't know if y'all know what a yeah. hoop, like a, a huge skirt. That's it's what like I was telling a thousand that the other yards day. of fabric. Yeah. And and I'm like, can't we just run it through the machine? I'll be done in five minutes. And she's like, no, because back in 18 whatever, they oh, didn't have a sewing geez. machine and they did a prick stitch. And so you have to do a prick stitch. And I'm like, but nobody's gonna see it. Yeah, she's nobody's like, gonna I'll see know. it. Yeah, she'll know. I'll know. So that's a good teacher. During yeah. rehearsal, while I was waiting for my lines, because I was also, I was also in the show, I'm over here Aww, doo -doo -doo -doo, awesome. doing a prick stitch. It took me like how long did it take you? Yeah, forever. Forever, like days. <laughs> did you it finish it, or did somebody help you? No, I finished it. Oh, oh yeah. nice. Like, I, I Success. <laughs> You're like, this is mine. You're committing. Yeah. You were like, I'm I, gonna and do And that it. was for practicum, and you know, for practicum, you needed X amount of hours. Yeah. And I always had like over 300 and something Yeah, you hours. only needed 90 to get an A. And most people, like, if they were really into it, they'd yeah, always definitely. rack up like 200 hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know here we don't have too many opportunities to get enough hours, but when we were there, there was opportunities all over the place. Yeah. Like, there was always things to do yeah. all the time. And it was really fun. Like I had a lot of fun. In I college. did too. It was and so fun. I kind of wish I would have gotten into the design major more than TV film. I mean, they were kind of very similar though. There was very few things that were different. Right. Um, but I realized I hated TV film. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all listen. I switched majors like several times throughout my college career. And uh, but when I got to UTPA, I was like, I'm gonna do TV film because I can get best of both worlds, and you know, and I already know how to do this, and I'll just have all this uh, film background so that you know, I was I thought in my head, <laughs> I know that out there like theater is really like hard to get a good gig and to get paid, so if I'm working at a TV station editing. Then I can also work mm. in theater, and I could do like the two jobs, and I'm just yeah. That's that's, a, that's what uh, remember Dr. Jack Stanley would yeah. always say is like you got to do film to support your theater habit. Like, that's yes, what he would tell us. Okay. yes, and I mean, I mean <laughs> theater that's is advice. like yeah, that's such a great that's great advice. idea. Yeah. But you know, of course, I'm gonna do all my theater courses first, yeah. and I'm gonna save the, the best film. for last, which is TV film. And then by that point, when I realized. Um, just in the editing alone, I was like, Ew, I, I hate, hate this. this. <laughs> Why am I not in design? I could be working on costumes. I could be working on scenery. I could be learning this, I and I'm over here. Stitching a, uh, <laughs> I could be hurt from looking at the screen, mm -hmm. and I can't get the second to stick up. And why is there a, a dark moment, like for a split <laughs> half second? When did I cut it? You know. And if you if you do editing, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. But it's uh, I was like, I hate this. I I and now I have to live it. with my choices. <laughs> you know? But you know what? Here we are, pandemic. Yeah. And all yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm so glad that I did that because, yeah. yeah, I had to relearn how to edit, but it wasn't as big of a learning yeah. curve. It wasn't from scratch. It was like, oh, it's very similar Riding to this. Honestly, it was Riding just finding where they kept all the all the tools because yes. they're just in like different areas. Yes. Yeah. And no. then relearning like, the shortcuts. Where yeah. is the cutting yeah. tool? And I, think, and I think both of them trying to teach me refreshed their mind yes. yes you know so yeah. they were they had to be teacher you and on, student at the same time i was i was already doing you were already on premiere, premiere. Yeah, i started on final yeah. cut so final cut. it's not that different it's no. just that everything is in yeah. a different place yeah and yeah, yeah. Anyway. but it's good to always have like we're lucky now that we have like youtube and google yeah because literally i had like oh, yes. a window for, for the editing and, and then the window for like okay how do you do this technique okay 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 uh, you know, yeah. like you just like going back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course having Eric there. Hi Eric. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> just... And I hate to tell you, but now Da Vinci Resolve is like becoming the like Hollywood standard. Oh yeah. Right? Oh. 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 Is it like free or Resolve. something? It's a competition. Well there's a free version. There's a free version but... to get you hooked. Yeah. But even then it's not expensive, but right? You know what? They're really good because only some very advanced features are in the paid version, and I think for most people You don't, don't need it. Need like it. a normal person. Doesn't need it. No, no, no. I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna pass. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. Listen, I'm Premiere. I'm still trying to get the hang of it. I use Premiere Rush. Oh for no! What I'm I, 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 I have it on Premier my phone. Premiere Rush. It, it's it's great for it's when you're on the simple. go. I'm, I'm but working for on, what you do, yes, like I'm, it's perfect. I've it been really working is. on. Uh, we've been we've been filming at the at the pack since the pandemic. Like we've been having a few groups coming in. And for editing uh, music, mm -hmm. you know, There's or for what I'm have to do, do like yeah. there isn't a lot yeah. going on. Yeah. It's just maybe two angles, yeah. and you know, for mm -hmm. that, Rush is working beautifully yeah. for me. I'm getting praised, mm -hmm. and uh, and 
you know, in, in something that I don't think I'm that good in, you know? <laughs> And, uh, but it's, it's just, but you forget a, that most people don't know how to do that. Yeah. Yeah. You know? When you don't know how to do it, you're just like, we were talking like, about oh that God. the other day, right? Like if people would just actually like research or actually take mm -hmm. the time to learn to do something, mm -hmm. there's a lot of money you could save yourself, a lot of yes. time you could save yes. yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And it's like, just look it up. And like, stress. Ooh. I mean, like you don't really need to be on Adobe Premiere for the types of things, unless you want to take it to that next level of exactly. editing. But you don't, you want to keep it simple. Like don't just simple. show, don't just use your fancy, extremely expensive phone to just scroll through Instagram like yeah I I have the time I'm like looking I hear something and I'm like Google what is this you know or like yeah. blah 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 like really like that one time where you showed me somebody's story on Instagram they were recording birds on the on the on a wire and they were going like this and the person was like what is this oh, is yeah. this the sign of the apocalypse they were freaking out and I was like let me look it up <laughs> and literally it was just like oh they're drying themselves off yeah <laughs> it's like you know like the, the kinds of things that people jump to yes when it's you could easily just go why do birds stand with their wings open oh they're absorbing heat Cause you know because they need their power are, like they literally yeah. power themselves with with the sun apparently it's not an apocalypse it's not an apocalypse <laughs> it's not an apocalypse <laughs> it's not an apocalypse, <laughs> it's not an apocalypse. The internet, apocalypse. yeah and it's like half the time half the day i'm like what is this where can yeah. i find that you know or random things like Good source, good vegetarian sources of vitamin D or whatever. You know, like that's it, like, that's what I spend the day doing. You know, yeah. You we have such a awesome tool in that regard, especially when you're working YouTube. with people and you don't know certain references that they're talking about. Yeah, yeah. and you're just you know because you want to keep it professional and you sometimes you really want to give if you don't know what's going on sometimes it might feel uncomfortable yeah. or like not confident in what you have to bring to the table so it's good to just be like take a moment and then just google whatever they just said to yeah, you yeah. and yeah. learn about yeah, learn what about they're it. talking yeah. about or at least and the then, topic you know yeah what it and is, when you talk like, with them again you 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 know hit them up with some of the facts that you've learned and you know it'll help you getting the job done too you know yeah. so and yeah, also definitely. youtube youtube's changed my life man mm -hmm. yeah. all the things that i've learned on youtube mm -hmm. my god i'm not gonna lie even even like like searching because uh, there's a you know how we want to try to go into LED lighting yeah. right so what I've been doing is just searching lights and they're on YouTube and they'll tell you yeah. exactly what they're doing yeah the how much how yeah, pros and cons it, yeah. how to use it and stuff like that because like I'm not gonna purchase every single one of them, put it on, and then figure right. out what it is that is gonna be appropriate right. for my stage. And, and even right. just like you influencing know, like, your purchases and making better choices. Yes. Yeah. Well, when I bought my iPad like a couple months ago, I was like, should I get the Pro? Should I get the new three? That's like you know the <laughs> semi Pro. Like, mm -hmm. like I literally watched all these like videos, and I'm like, okay, I yeah. don't need the fancy one because mm -hmm. I'm not gonna use it to its full capacity. Right. Like even things like yeah. that, right. you know, making better choices. And, and then, then you save yourself five hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah. And then the same thing that we do now with our iPads. Do and I we're, use it? We're no. running our right. programs, our, our shows <laughs> with iPads. Yeah. yeah. Like we could literally be running this projector with the iPad. We could be running audio with the iPad. We could be running like all of the stuff with the yeah. iPad. And mm -hmm. Back then, I, I know, mean, when we, we were in like school, <laughs> when we were in school, don't even discs. get me started on CD players. CDs. When we were in school, did y'all not have to deal with CDs, tapes, and like stuff like that when you were in like one act and when yeah. you were in like if you're that? if you're in the arts and you bring a CD into a venue, <laughs> shame on you. It's 2021, <laughs> all right? You better get a flash drive yeah, I was gonna say. and you better upload that because- oh, you better have an iPad. You know how many programs We don't have are? time to wait for a CD yeah. to load oh, yeah. and then you're gonna bring it and it's scratched up yeah. and then it's our fault? Yeah. It's also Shame like- Shame on you. A couple years ago, we bought this great send app. Send the link. This, send the link. This great <laughs> app that's digital, literally sliders, and you can put a sound cue in each, each like one. there's like 32 mm -hmm. channels. Amazing. Yes. Amazing. And it's digital, yes. and it's mm. fantastic. It was a lifesaver. Yeah. Amazing. You know, and it's like $30. Yeah. And you could set the level, you press play, each and it'll individual do it on level. Its, yes. it's fucking fantastic. Oh my God, it is the we, best. Every, is every, the now best. And again, every now and again, I get someone and they bring me a CD, and I'm like, I'm, I know you're very proud that you burned it yourself. It Burning is when you like. Who put even the stuff still in has a CD burner? <laughs> Eric, um, do you have CD burners, Eric? You know, it's funny that you brought this topic up. Because <laughs> I had a customer this weekend who want me to make a DVD menu. What? For their DVD, and I was like, oh, What are we in? 1993? <laughs> like a DVD. We had we learned that in class. We, we did. We that. we had to learn how to make DVD menus because yeah. during editing. It don't was, ask we me had to, to that, learn the remember. whole Final Cut suite, <laughs> which was like six programs. There was Final Cut for regular editing, Soundtrack Pro for sound editing. Yes. There was a specific 
a specific program for just, each and like everything. Like, I feel like Joseph's like about to get a panic like attack, Adobe. y'all. Yeah, we need it's to like all of them. And we had to learn how to make DVD menus. And one of our, I remember one of our projects, like, had one of the checkoffs was like, our, did you make a DVD menu? Our reel for graduation yeah. had to have a DVD, a DVD menu. menu. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad they made us do it. Yeah, not, but I mean, not, but like, what do you use that now? I'm not going to make it now. <laughs> just go straight specific. to play. Just hit play. You're that ready. Was useless play. learning. I'm just going to send you the link and figure it out. Here's the YouTube <laughs> link that I uploaded, you know? Oh, Vimeo. Yeah. No, and then everything now, like with the smart televisions, mm-hmm. it's really great. Um, we've been working since, you know, I've been working on these um, video editing projects. We started doing an online series okay. with, uh, I work with Patron of the Arts, and um, they have a YouTube channel. Check it out, Patron of the Arts. And you'll see some of the concerts that we've been doing um, in the fall. And uh, what's really awesome is, is that you just open it up on your television, and you hit play, and you can actually watch it on your TV in your living room. Oh, that's beautiful. And um, it's nice to kind of like have your little wine, yeah. a little cheese platter, you know, or whatever. Listen, and you it's, can enjoy it. I love that you can play YouTube now on television. Yeah, oh, it's mm-hmm. it's Fantastic. amazing, and um, that's way better than a DVD player <laughs> or a CD <laughs> or a CD player. <laughs> Who's got time for that? You gotta go shopping for a CD player. Oh my god! Think... And then you gotta put it back in the box. Yeah, it's too much. <laughs> and hope you didn't what? scratch. No, and hope, I, you didn't, I hope you put it in the right box. You know what really <laughs> like I find weird is that there's still people who buy DVDs for movies. I'm Masochist. like, what are you doing? I, I, right. I think it's the only reason people do that. I think is just for collection purposes. Yeah. Yeah. But it's but what just is this like, collection gonna bring you? I mean, you know, later someone's gonna be like, oh my god, I want the Wizard of oh, Oz. Oh, like with people DVD with vinyls Blu-ray. and stuff. You yeah. know, like I get it. I get it. Yeah, right. people still buy vinyls. Do even it's though, your money. You know, do what you want. Even though like. Like, but you vinyls can get... are superior because no, of the sound no, quality. I, I will say that I buy the 4K Blu-rays because sometimes the streaming, the quality for me. You're like, I don't want to wait. It's just not there. Yeah. I don't get, I don't yeah. get the color. Mm-hmm. I don't get the mm-hmm. quality. And even like Netflix 4K streaming, okay, fine. I have fast internet. But I'm a movie buff. And okay. I, I want this. The Dolby Digital. See. See? Everything. You see? Well, that's why. That's why. I don't, I don't care. Eric does that. As long as, I mean, yeah, I, don't I grew up on VCR. Yeah. So <laughs> as long as it's visible. Eric does that as his job, though. There's people yeah. who don't do that at all. Yeah. And they're, like, just buying. But they all, but Eric says, like, there's only specific things that you would buy those for, right? It's like an audio file. Yeah. 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 It just depends. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But totally. some people buy a bunch of movies. Absolutely. Every movie. Absolutely. And it's like, no. Stop. <laughs> So to wrap up a little bit, um, the, there's a question that we've been asking all of our guests, and it's, um, what do you think the future of theater is? That's a great question. I, I don't know. I, I can't, you know, I, I um, haven't really worked on theater since, probably since I moved back and I got to work with you guys mm-hmm. on, um, what was that show? Anyways. Almost um, Maine. Huh? Almost Maine. Almost Maine, yeah. Oh, that's the yeah. Last time. You did costumes for that. Yeah, I yeah. totally I forgot about that. Um, yeah, that's the last show that I've worked on in that regard. But um, I think seeing as I work with a lot of concerts and... Mm-hmm. Um, yes, we can open a, yeah, up to it can, performing. Just open it. I guess just, just, just in performance. performance. Cause have you guys had an audience uh, physically? Since the pandemic? Since the pandemic? No. Okay. Yeah. No, we so, have not. Well, I guess what would you see like the future of just the arts, arts. you know? You know what? I see a lot of cool things happening mm-hmm. just with the technology alone that's right. out there. And you know, every time a, a new venue is made and the people behind it, the engineers, they listen to the artists and the people who are going to use it. They come up with these amazing venues mm-hmm. with these uh, amazing uh, stages that can change the scenery and you have a different se- a, a set underneath the stage and another one hanging above. and. Um, the lighting alone, mm-hmm. you know, what you can do with lighting now. And, and I, I see a lot of great new stories being told. I hope new stories, you know, cause I get tired of seeing the same story told over and over, yeah. you know, like when people want to redo a show or they want to change a movie into a musical or something like that, yeah, which is, which is good. But you know, we also need, I want to see, yeah. I want to learn or I want to experience new stories, yeah. new viewpoints and with now people have access to, well, they've always had access to, you know, recording and mm-hmm. uploading to YouTube. But now with more people in our area getting into that, we're going to be seeing a lot of 
more stories, a lot of different perspectives, mm -hmm. and getting to learn what's really happening in different parts of Yeah, because that's one thing that they bring up a lot is like, are we running out of stories? I'm like, no, we're, we're never gonna run out of stories. There's plenty of new things to talk about, and it's, I think you're just getting lazy. I don't know. Yeah, I was about to say, I think we, we, we haven't given ourselves the time to actually write this down, yeah. you know, to actually say, okay, I have this story. Like, we've all had stories. Yeah. We all have stories that we I mean, can write, but I, it's just yeah. like, Right, you, and then can do you, you do take it? a risk you or do it? you go with something that already worked? Yeah. Yeah. You exactly. know what I mean? Yeah. And um, just take the risk. I, I, you know what I, I mean? I yeah. agree. Because um, if, it's, if it's good, it's good. And if, if it doesn't go as well, then you know what? You're like, okay, well, that didn't work. Find out what, why it didn't work or look into it and, and then, then try, try again, again and do something else. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and um, I, people are so different, you know? Yes. We all like different things mm -hmm. and we'll see the same scene and interpret it and find what we like about that scene, like we'll notice individual things. You know, we could probably mm -hmm. come to an agreement when we start talking about it and like breaking it down, but there'll be things that you notice, that I notice, mm -hmm. that you notice. Yeah, and there's different so. things to like appreciate about certain content and things that like, you know, like I know I like to have conversations like this with you guys and like with other people about, well, what are you watching these days, blah, blah, blah. Well, I liked it because of this, this, and this, or I appreciate this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. Like I know one thing that I like, one of the other big shows that people are watching right now is like Shit's Creek, right? And it's like, it's a yeah. it is a really funny show. I'm not super, super into it, but I really, really appreciate the way that the characters were created mm -hmm. and yes. how like- Character the, development The character is development so is so good. The, the, uh, the fact that it's, they're taking this typical like family trope of rich people that usually, what do you see when you see a rich family? They very don't love, shallow. Very shallow, they don't love depth. each other. They're kind of like, you know, whatever. But I love that that family actually does love each other. They just don't yeah. know. In their own weird way. In their own way. weird way. <laughs> and that the mom is like your classic, like, messed up in the head, kind of like a drunk pill addict. But she's <laughs> still of. a good person. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, she still tries, and she loves her children. Yeah, I love it. And like that's your what average I, kind of drunk person. Yeah, Elf. but she just, like, that's what I appreciate so much, that they're actually a real family that, that yeah, they're messed up, and they have their weird stuff, but they... Do you think they kind of almost humanize them a little bit more? Yeah. Like, actually yeah. giving them some real, like, topics to think about, real life, right. yeah. like... I mean, and they're also feeding off of them their own experience, too, because aren't they all just kind of, like, of, like married or, like... Well, uh, um... the dad and the son are father and son for real. Uh -huh. uh, I know their sister is in the show, but she's not the sister. Okay, yeah, so like she that She plays kind like the waitress. She's a bartender. There's, she's yeah. a bartender, that's yeah, her yeah. sister. Uh, and of course, Eugene Levy and, um, yeah. what's her name? Oh my God, Catherine O'Hara, the mm -hmm. mom, she's who, wonderful. if you don't know who she is, you, she's should, great. you should be ashamed. She's an amazing she's actor. She's a legend. Yeah. Yeah. She is a legend, she's and a legend. they've, I mean, they've had a relationship for like the past 20, 30 years, like yeah. just working together. Mm -hmm. They always work with each mm -hmm. other. And, and they're always like a couple. They're all, yeah, they're always a couple. If you've ever seen so, any Christopher Guest movies, great like Best in Show, mm -hmm. yeah. what is that, the, the, A Mighty Wind, yeah. like all those movies are incredible and they're yeah. both in them and they're always a couple. Yeah, they're uh, great, they're great. They just work together so yeah. well, anyway. Um, and I guess uh, one last thing, Joseph. Um, is there any advice that you can give any future thespian or arts major or anything in the, going into this uh, career path? Uh, yes, okay, so. Um, if you're, because I work more technical theater now, you know, production. If you're into technical theater, um, go into it like a hundred percent because there's always a gig out there, yeah. you know. And for every one of you that there is, there's another 500 Actors. people yeah. that say they can do what you do, yeah. right? But only you can do what you do, you know, whether that's good or bad or whatever. But do it well because I. I've met so many people that are just lighting designers or just costume designers, and they've never, you know, done a hang on focus. You know, mm -hmm. how are you as a lighting designer? How how do you not know how to do a hang, hang on it. focus? You know, or how do you not know how to program a board? Mm -hmm. um, then anybody could say, you know, and these are people who went to school and they have a degree, right. you know, and it's just a theory, a theory degree. You know, they've never really worked on anything. Um, and what's good about here, especially in, in, at STC and at UTRGV, is that when you major in these areas, you have an opportunity to just get in there and do a hang and focus mm -hmm. and work as a designer and build mm -hmm. things and create things and 
and learn from, you know, whatever you create. If something didn't go right, don't get hung up on the negativity of it all and just say, you know what, this didn't go right. Let me just figure out how to make it better and, you Fail know, forward. move forward. Like, mm -hmm. don't get hung up on something that happened three shows ago, four shows ago, because then you're just, you're not living, you're not focused on what's happening presently, you yeah. know? Yeah. And um, when it comes to collaboration, I know, <laughs> I mean, it's crazy when you get several heads together and a lot, you start talking about how you see a show. Um, but just keep in mind, you know what? Yes, everyone's got really great ideas, but also keep in mind your budget mm -hmm. because um, you wanna do something great, but if you're going past your budget and you wanna do all these great things, all of those great ideas don't manifest themselves and then you end up with something that's not as great as you envisioned. And then you feel all like, oh, it didn't happen yeah. how I wanted it to happen, mm -hmm. you know? Stay within your budget and plan and design within your budget and execute what you can afford to execute and do it well, do that well, because the audience isn't gonna know like all the 20 other ideas that you had prior to mm -hmm. yeah. whatever, you know? They're just gonna see what you sh are showing them and whether it's well put together or not. Mm -hmm. And they don't even know if it's well put together or not, yep. you know? So I think that, you know, um, and if you're an actor and you're only just an actor, I would definitely say Pick get, in, get into some tech, yeah. bro or girl, <laughs> because, you know, um, just as there's many tech people, there's even more actors yeah. out there, you know? And it's super competitive. Mm -hmm. And sometimes totally. you just need an in for like whatever production company, you need the, an in into that little group or that little okay. bubble. And if you know how to do props, you know, but you also like to act, then get in doing if props. You, if you want to make money, or not make money, but have like a nice stable job, then go into the tech yeah. side. Tech uh, side has more opportunities yeah. because... There's less of them. There's okay. less techs. And if you're good at what you do, man, I remember I was working this one show. I got hired to do the uh, drafting a design concept. This guy hit me up and he's like, uh, I'm a light designer, but I have this concept for uh, how I wanna do the scenery and everything, but I'm not a scenic designer and can you just draft it up for me? And I'm like, yeah, sure, you know, and that was like how I got brought into it. So he pitched the idea to me and I drafted it up and I gave it to him and then I got invited to a production meeting and I met the carpenter and all that stuff. And uh, I was gonna help. Then they're like, can you help us, you know, help the carpenter put it together or whatever? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And then uh, before I knew it, I ended up working, like helping them hang and focus the lighting. Wow. And then before, be, after that, then I ended up running the lights for the show. And because I was running the lights for that show at that venue, that venue had other shows that were scheduled. Uh, they were doing the rehearsals. Uh, they had like a two week uh, time slot that they got. So they had another show come in and because I was doing the hang and focus for the lights for this show and the other show was coming in, the other show was like, can we just pay you, you know, to work this show since you already have it programmed and, you know, we're gonna work around nice. your show anyways. That's because you, you were probably giving your 100% yeah. like you're saying. Yeah, and I and went in there just thinking. That. Yeah. yeah, never be afraid yeah. like that you're not good enough if somebody asks you to do something, just Start do doing it. Yeah. Just start do it. doing it. You know how many like little weird opportunities that I fell into just because I was like, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. and you it know? is scary and at first, it's, it's, and you might yeah. mess up, but it's okay. And it is it's, scary like, at Ask first. questions and also own up to like, yeah. you know, those mistakes that you're mm -hmm. making and yeah. say, how can I do this better? You know, I'm still mm -hmm. learning. It's everyone like that you're gonna work with. Just say yes and figure it out. They're later. gonna come <laughs> across like a new thing that they're trying to solve yeah. Yeah. for every show that they yeah. do. You know, so they also have questions too, yeah. you know, yeah. they're trying to figure stuff out. So you're not gonna be alone in that regard. Yeah. But yeah, like it'll, that for me was so cool because mm -hmm. I, I thought I was just gonna, you know, Drive, render draw. something and then be on my <laughs> <Right>. way. <laughs> but I got sucked into that show. And, and you know? getting paid. Yeah. Like, and I ended up getting paid that's more than what I was amazing. expecting. How old were you? Uh, I was. This was the last year? <laughs> this was last year. <laughs> um, no, I think I was, that was like maybe 10, 11 years ago. So I'm 35, that's like, I was 24, 25. That's awesome. So, wow. And then in, in that time when like theater wasn't so like big mm -hmm. as it is now, I think it's grown mm -hmm. tremendously here in the Valley. Oh, but yeah. that's just, that's, that's awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, that was, story. that was really good. And then you get to work with different people and.
you know, that was my in, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. That was, like, my in into that. That, that was when I was mm -hmm. in Canada. Oh, yeah, you lived in Canada yeah. for a while. I forgot about that. Yeah. Remember mm -hmm. you told me that when you lived in Canada, in Montreal, like, that everybody was a designer, but nobody had to do, no, knew how to do anything. Right, because, oh. you know, in Canada, they have, like, so many good schools and universities, but a but lot of people, designed. they only graduate with theory, you know, and... They're not mm. even allowed to touch the fixtures yeah. because of yeah. insurance reasons. I mean, I know like theory and... analysis class for like. Well, like wow. they just graduate with theory or just design, and they don't right. know how to. They don't know how to do it, do you it. know. And that for me, it's because I, huh. you know, I wasn't even a, a design major. Yeah. You know, I did TV, I did TV film, so I did like everything. So for me to go in there and and know how to do things that the light the, lighting designer wasn't, you know, a hundred percent confident in to. doing because yeah. he wasn't able to, you know, Hand get that up, experience. Yeah. That for me, that was crazy, mm -hmm. you wow. know, and you meet all these people. And, and so then you, at first, you know, you're kind of like intimidated because yeah. you're like, oh, I got like all these, you know, oh, Wait, people. you don't actually know how to do that? And yeah. then okay. you find out like they're kind of limited in what they can do. And, and so then you're like, okay, I can hang. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? I got this. I got this. Offer, I got you know? this. <laughs> so don't, don't feel like intimidated. Just I know, get out there even and work. like uh, long, when I first started my theater degree, I took the first class, which was like drawing and rendering for the theater. And it was like half drafting and half like figure drawing for like costuming and stuff. The first day I was like so freaked out and all these theater majors and I was like, I was gonna drop. I was so scared. I didn't think I could do it. And then I decided like the next day, like, no, we're gonna do this. Like, no, you know? And I did, and I was actually better than most of the people there. So yeah. you know, like, you just, yeah. just do it. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. You know? And I love so your renderings. They're don't great. Give up. They're so I haven't artistic. drawn in a long time. Mm -hmm. I love the I I like remember, I remember we took rendering class together, I think, or we took uh no, costume no, no. design. Costume design. With Stephanie Hawk. With Again. Stephanie Hawk. Again. Stephanie And Hawk. I remember she would always like I would always draw these like really perfect like people with their perfect bodies. Yeah, you bodies. draw really well, Marsha. And then she would be like, I mean, really these are good. great, but I don't know where you're going to find people who look like this. Because yeah. everybody was like, I you see. know? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that's one thing that I learned. And that's a good like, point, Like, you too. can't yeah. design perf like on perfect bodies when you're doing it, because then you see the person and they're, it's not going to work yeah. on them, yeah. you know? So you start to learn Silhouettes change. Yeah, silhouettes Bodies change. change. Yeah. It's, it's hard to design before, and then you see the person, and they're like, like oh, yeah. it's not going to yeah. work. Yeah. So you always have to be also ready to, like, have... Be willing to change Edit. your ideas. Oh, you can't be, you cannot be married Don't. to an idea no. because no. you're going to be very disappointed. My, like yeah. my oh, lighting, Edit. my lighting Edit. professor, she kind of, kind of messed up. It's like more, it's like dark humor, but she, her term is kill the baby. Mm -hmm. Yes. So <laughs> shoot yeah. the baby. Yeah. Shoot, that was shoot, Jack. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's Jack so cool. was shoot. Um, no, and sometimes you know what? Yeah, your baby's beautiful and everything, and you love your baby. But um, sometimes, like, it's just so, better it after is. you change it. it. Is. You know, and like, it just save that baby for another moment. You know? Yeah, like it'll happen. It's just you. It's not you work will <laughs> eventually that great idea that you were so hung up on. You will get to do it again. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. I guarantee it. All righty, y'all. Well, <laughs> well, we can talk forever. Um, ooh, ooh. I want to thank all of you guys for watching. Thank you for listening. Uh, please check out our Facebook, our YouTube, our Instagram. Um, I'm a, please do do? look at all of our links. We will be putting <laughs> all of the links from, from UTRGV. Yeah. Um, also, the Patreon of the Arts um, and all of that good stuff. So, so keep, 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 keep um, uh, supporting. supporting the arts. Uh, we need you guys currently to keep us uh, motivated and, um, uh, you know, your views Send are nice. Send us love letters. <laughs> no, don't do that. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. <laughs> and you guys, uh, hope you guys uh, stick around and listen to our next podcast. Thank you, Eric. Thank, Thank you, Eric. Eric. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, Dean. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you, everyone. Yes. This is the most fun I've had since the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having time to do this for us, too. Sure thing. Um, sure thing. But uh, yeah. Thank you, guys. Bye. Stay safe. Be well.